Hey everybody, welcome back. Got another Moira VOD review today. Uh, this is a Masters 5 VOD review uh, on console, King's Row. This player says this was a very close match with both teams capping third point in overtime. We had slightly la lacking DPS in the first round, so I played a little bit more aggressively. One thing I did badly was the first round I essentially heal botted and then failed any time I tried to make an as aggressive play. One thing I think I did well... Let me finish reading this. Uh, one thing I think I did well was playing my uh, playing for my life, and I think my positioning was pretty good in general. Shout out to my tank uh, and other support because I think they were doing very well this game. Well, I like the attitude, um, and that's good. You know, there's there's a couple of good things there. One, I like the positive attitude, right? You realize it's a challenge, but you're still positive about it. Um, and also, I like that uh, you're self-critical. That's that's a good thing, right? Understanding where your weaknesses are is is important. Um, Right out of the gate here, uh, I've said in other videos, there's a there's a cool um, orb tech you can do under the bus. I'm not going to go through it every single time. Um, I don't like holding this close. I'm actually surprised that this is a... You guys are holding this close in a Masters game. Um, because literally a, a, a Widow or Hanzo up here can can start deleting people. A Widow, look at, your, look at your Zen right here. Basically just turn him off and send him back to spawn. So... Yeah, I don't. I don't like holding this choke. Uh, if I can get my team to back up, I will. Um, if they don't, I still will not play up this far forward. I will still play um, either here or here uh, without going around the corner. Um, so I can still put pressure on the enemy team, but then I'm not. I'm not out in the in the choke because all really needs to happen is that the enemy tank just walk through this choke. <laughs> Uh, and then run over your tank, uh, basically with their team, okay? Um, because it's going to be, by instinct, they're going to want to move forward, and you're going to want to move back. So, um, that's how aggressive tanks uh, are get, get really good at taking space, is they're able to, to pick out when that happens. Okay, I'm just going to walk over uh, the enemy team. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't like this positioning. It, it leaves you open to, to take damage, okay? So that's feeding, what you just did there. That's feeding, right? Everybody talks about, oh, he's in there feeding. Well, I think a lot of people don't even really know what that means. Um, feeding can be defined basically as taking unnecessary damage, okay? Um, everybody's spread out here. I like that you're doing the healing. Um, I would have spritzed them a little bit, not just held it down, and then as soon as the orb came off cooldown, right? Um, none of them were out in the open. They were kind of around the corner a little bit. You, you can, you can get away with that. Uh, what you did wasn't wasn't wrong though, right? It's just kind of there's multiple ways to skin a cat. Uh, me, I probably would have tried to save my resources a little bit there. Okay, so uh, see, and this is there is no reason f for your DPS to see this, especially your um, Junkrat to see the enemy ash, right? So how, how do you work around that, right? You can't change your junk, right? You can't make him do anything you want. Um, so how do you how do you do that? Uh, there's a few ways to do it on this map. If if they just want to stand in this choke, I'll I'll actually go all the way up here. Um, it's kind of hard once they're there because you basically have to go all the way over here and fade jump up to this, which you can do. Um, but it's kind of a, you know, it takes a little bit of time to do that rotation. And if these guys all of a sudden grow a set of balls and decide to walk through the choke point, um, you know, you, you might still be rotating. So that's where kind of paying attention to what's going on around you is, is key to that. So, for example, you see their tank backed off because he's really low health, right? If you see that, it's not saying you you would have, right? Obviously, I can see through the walls here, and I have a uh, an overlay of exactly what's going on. Uh, but if you see that, be like, okay, they're backing off. Um, they're not going to walk through the choke at this moment. Okay, now I'm going to use this opportunity to jump up here. Um, so you jump up here, and what's the point of jumping up here? Is that you can fire damage orbs against this wall. You can um, get their DPS to turn around, Okay. The good thing is, with their DPS setup, is they're probably not going to chase you. The Bastion's too big uh, and too slow. He doesn't have any movement abilities uh, to chase you, right? So he's not going to walk his ass all the way up here uh, and, and come after you. The Ash might, but you can duel an Ash close up, 
that's not a problem at all. Okay. So the fact that they don't have any mobile heroes except for their Moira, and I'm not worried about an enemy Moira because if she comes to push me out, right? Moira does so little damage, I, I, I'm not worried about it, right? If, if she's going to come up here, you know, I'll, I'll dick around with her a little bit and then maybe get out of there. But I'm not afraid that I'm going to die. Okay, so uh, that's, that's something I do on this map is, um, you know, I, I don't really see this. Right in, in GM, but I I have definitely uh, started like up there, up on that that pedestal, and done the same thing. Wait till they get up to the choke, and then start dicking around with their supports, so their supports turn around, and then my team will notice that, and they'll press the advantage. I like the orb. This on console, huh? Your movement is excellent. It's like I, I I probably wouldn't. I don't know if I would have guessed this was console right away. Most uh, console-like movement, I, it seems very slow, but very consistent. Um, so this feels like maybe you're running at a, a higher sensitivity, right? So you, this is where you were talking about, right? Yeah, I'm just kind of heel botting. I don't really know what I'm doing. They're not doing anything either, right? So take that opportunity to, to move up. Okay, yeah, well, the, the, <laughs> the console movement never really showed itself there, right? That 3D movement is definitely kind of difficult. Mm, okay, so what I was just about to say here is we're, we're kind of just sitting on our ult. The enemy Moira already ulted. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to ult and press the advantage. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't run away from her. You have your ult, and she just used her coach done, right? Because she used her coach gun to get up there so she doesn't have it on cooldown. Right. See? Okay. Kill the ash. You, you didn't need to help your tank kill that tank. Now look at the ash. She's still alive. And she's still shooting at your team. Okay. Now you push her, right? As soon as she hopped up there like an idiot, I coalesce her face off. And then she kills you. So you end up getting punished, right? So this is a huge opportunity that you had here to swing this fight, right? Because she and the Bastion killed your your Bastion, right? I'm sure she probably had something to do with that too, right? Sometimes that doesn't that stuff doesn't always show up. But look how much value she got, and how much value she wouldn't have gotten if you would have killed her first. Let's back all the way up because I want to see. I'm going to look at it from a different angle here. Okay, because where's the where's the rest of the team? Okay, so Ana's there. Their tank is way overextended, which means you don't even have to worry about him. And he's not getting healed now either, right? Because their Moira's dead, and the Ana's looking at the Ash. Okay, you don't need to be involved with this at all. Okay, you have four other. Well, I guess the Junkrat's did. You have three other players. They can three v one a tank. Okay, so she jumps over like that. All. Okay, so let's say you ult here. She doesn't have coach gun. You kill her. Then what do you do? You look over here and start pressuring their Ana, right? Now, maybe you're not going to kill her and she runs away or whatever, right? But you push her back. The tank dies. The ash dies. Then your team moves in and you guys win the fight. Because now you afforded their Ana the opportunity to move up, right? So much value, so much value was lost here. Okay. So that was big. That was big. That was a big opportunity for you to get a lot of value. Now, how do you recognize that kind of stuff, right? Well, that one was actually pretty easy because the Ash presented herself to your face. So kill her, right? Even if I didn't have Coalescence, I would have stayed there and dueled her. You know she didn't have Coach Gun because you heard her use it and she got up there, right? She had to have used it. Okay. Take those duels. Don't be afraid to take those duels. Especially up close like that, against a sniper. All right, the only one it's dangerous against is, is Hanzo. Okay, but you can still dance around a Hanzo. You know, you've seen me do it in, in some of the videos where I, I post my gameplay. Okay. Now, is that to say I don't get killed? <laughs> I get killed all the time, right? 
You know, I, I don't win every duel. But you gotta take those duels. Right? And so, for example, right now, I'm cool with this. You don't... You're not always gonna be in their back line. You're not always gonna be putting direct pressure on, on, a, on them. You might... Yeah, this might... We're in this, like, kind of pseudo-poke phase here. Um, where we're just just kind of setting up, right? I really like this. You, you're keeping her... You're keeping her attention on you. Uh, I, I really like that play, right? She probably wasn't going to hurt anybody anyway because of the, the transcendence. But what if she decided to get smart and target somebody that wasn't inside the transcendence? You were, right? And you keep, you know, um, beaming her. You know, that's, uh, that's good. Okay. Um... Uh, it, it seems like you like to hold on to coalescence. Okay. As soon as they come around the corner, you see him punch? As soon as he punch. I, I'd probably wait for my... Yep. Okay. I wouldn't have faded there. I would have waited for the orb because I would have stepped around the corner. Orb, coalescence. Okay. Maybe if it was dire, I, I, I don't know. It just it depends. Like, I might just cast it anyway and save the Sigma, because you had enough time to save the Sigma. Um, yeah. <laughs> I like you're taking attention. That's good. You can do that stuff earlier, but it, you didn't really have the opportunity to do it there. Um, I definitely would have coalesced there, though. Oh, look at that. You, you were still holding on to your coalesce. There's so many opportunities here to use it, right? And it's um, you're you're not taking them. You you seem kind of risk averse, uh, and unfortunately, to climb higher, you're gonna have to take risks, right? They're calculated risks, and you know you, you want them to pay off, but sometimes they're not going to. Right? And you're still holding on to coalescence. I want to go back because I want to see how long you you've been holding this. Okay, you get it at 4:49. Get it 4:49. So let's let's see when you use it. Okay, you're gonna use it here. 6:21, right? So minute 40, basically. You held on to your ult for a minute and 40 seconds. More result. And look at that, right? You get punched right out of it. This is why you don't hang on to your ult. Okay? More result just happens too quickly, right? It's pretty easy to interrupt. Okay? So just you use it, right? And you had an opportunity to use it when you first got it. Okay. And if you feel like, ah, there's not an opportunity to use it, make an opportunity to use it. Put yourself in a position where you can coalesce put a ton of pressure on them, right? There's so many different uses for coalescence that when you get it, you're almost always going to have an option to use it for one of those reasons. Okay. This is good, right? Just, this is fine. I wouldn't even, you know, I'm not, I wouldn't go over there, right? I'd stay around here and, and shoot orbs and, you know, wait for them to commit. Uh, well, never mind. I'm, I try not to go into map specific up. But uh, one of the one of the places that I like to shoot orbs when it's when we're at this phase is right there. All right, so you're standing in this corner. Shoot an orb right here. It's gonna bounce there, and then I think it goes here, and then here, and then here. So or something like that. I can't remember, but either way, it goes over here and it stays over here for a little bit where they're walking. Right. Uh, I've gotten all kinds of just. Random kills from it, right? Of course, you you get ult charge from it. You get your healing spray back. Um, there's a there's a lot a lot of opportunities. But the uh, moral of that story is 
Look for ways to use the map geometry to your advantage. And King's Row is very forgiving about that. They're not gonna kill her. I wouldn't even... Right? I'd be careful. Okay. It's good to move up a little bit sometimes, but I just be careful. You know, because they don't have one shot, right? They just use their sleep, right? Basically, the only thing that probably could kill you. Um, just be careful. Okay, I I almost never shoot a healing orb during transcendence. Uh, it, it seems like they kind of almost happen at the same time. Yeah, that happened at the same time. I'm not worried about that. I mean, you hesitated to shoot the orb, but e either way, that's that's not a big deal. I like that bounce. It's good. Good. Put the pressure on over here. Now, you're standing out in the open, though. This is bad. Okay, your tank's back, right? Oh. Yeah, you got punished because you were standing out in the open, and then you f you faded away. But you faded to another open spot because you were so far away from cover, uh, and you got punished for it. Okay. Here was another opportunity for you to use your ult. Okay, so let's... Let me go back to that real quick. Okay, we're right here. Let's go... Let's do this. Let's do it from here. Alright, so, you're right here. They start looking at you. You fade. Okay, here, at this point, since I have my coalescence, right, and I'm going to use it, I'm going to fade back, then coalescence, and then see where I'm at. Right and and get my get my bearings and get a target, right? Because you weren't looking at them, you don't actually know where they are. Okay, so you you gave yourself a bad position, right? Bad position to start from, right? So either fade over there, you can fade in here, but you need to fade out of the line of sight of everybody. Okay, and then you can cast your coalescence here. The chance of Doomfist actually punching from you, punching you from here is pretty low, right? Because you can dodge his punches pretty easily, especially in coalescence, because you move so fast. Okay, but again, coalescence, your tank's back. Do it. Don't be afraid to do it. Just just commit to it. And guess what? You coalescence and you fuck it up and you die anyway. Okay, no big deal. Just try again next time. Okay, but at least you tried. See, their, their support, their Ana, she knows what's up. She's like, fuck this. I'm not a healer. I'm going to kill some shit. Right? And that's how people climb on support. And what I like about Moira is she's really good at that. So you can see you've had quite a few, uh, I'd say quite a few opportunities to, to do a lot of good stuff with your ults. Um, your orbs have been good. Okay? I like I like you cast the orb and then, and then uh, did your ult. Uh, your positioning is okay. I, I would like to see more um, cover usage. Okay, the reason why I paused here, this is the second time that you've gone after a tank with your Coalescence, right? The first time was your own tank and kind of theirs, right? Uh, on the first point when they were both on Sigma. I never use Coalescence on a tank. Okay. Target somebody you can kill. Put a lot of pressure on, on them, right? Put a lot of pressure on their support. And the big thing, one of my biggest gripes about um, late fights like this, in lower ranks, is a lot of people don't know to target the supports. Typ typically, you want to target the supports first, if, because the reason why these these fights go on so long is because of the high sustain. If you take away this the sustain, because you guys have spawn advantage, and they don't, if you kill their supports first, you're more likely to win the fight. All right, let's... Uh, We're at 20 minutes already. This is a pretty long game. Um, I guess we'll we'll watch the attack because you say you guys they both cap three. Um, I probably won't watch the entire match. We'll see. So you got a really aggressive Rhine. Just yes, do as much as you can to enable them. Um, I don't like that the Briggs up here, but I guess it's late enough in the fight that it's fine. 
Do you guys not know that Ash is in there? Because you can hear her. That's funny. You guys are like off in space or something. All she did was really fucking stagger herself. Oh my god, she could have just stayed there and like waited for... Well, you guys would have capped, right? Anyway... I don't know. I feel like if I was gonna wait that long, I'd wait even longer and wait for the next engagement. That's pretty funny. Uh, anyway, so Brig... Uh, typically you don't want to front line with Brig. That's very dangerous. Um, but that's very situational too. But I'd say typically you don't want to front line with Brig. Okay, so you guys have an advantage here. Um, overall. Uh, Junker Queen is pretty hard to play in Orion, or at least from my experience. Um, I've been playing a lot more tank recently. Uh, they have a Bastion, right? But you can basically, they're, you're Ryan. You know, if, if you're in comms here and you get him, hey, Ryan, you know, walk up on the left, stay out of the Bastion's line of sight, and we can push up, and then you can shit all over the Junker Queen, right? Because Junker Queen is, is is kind of a, you know, a really short-range brawly character. Well, so is Ryan, but Ryan will shit all over the Junker Queen, right? So, you know, if you're in comms and you can you can get them to do that kind of stuff, cool. If not, no big deal. All right. Okay, well, they're Junkrat's an idiot. Oh, chase that. You chase kills like that. When you know they're low, <clears throat> chase that. 100%. Because he got the Mega and he killed your Hanzo. You fade over there. Watch, okay? You see him. There he is. You see him. He's on your screen. And you see his health. Chase that motherfucker, right? Do not let him get away. Yeah, and you turn around, right? Moira's job is to do this. That was your job. That was specifically and entirely your job to go kill him. Look at that. Look how much value you got. And he got the Mega, so he's full health again. And he's still behind you guys. Look how much ult charge you got from that. And he's still alive. Uh-oh. Uh, the, the big reason I said uh-oh to that, because your tank was already dead. It's going to be hard for you to flip this fight. Right? Because, look, your tank just gets annihilated, and they're, they're in Katsune Rush. Uh, you're not going to kill them. You're not going to kill anybody. You actually got pretty close, which I'm, I'm in surprise that you did. Um, but, uh-huh. Yeah. Cole, if you can swing the fight, right? And maybe maybe you thought you could swing that fight, and, and you did it, you know? Well, and then, and then sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, but if they have an active ult, a big support ult like that, uh, and your tank is dead, and they're all in that ult, and they're all full health, um, I'm, I'm not going to Coalescence, unless I want to make space. And that was not really a space-making Coalescence. Um, now, while they came, they turned around and chased you, right, and with a uh, space-making Coalescence, you, you typically want them to back up. So I mean, it's similar, but they're chasing you. You want them, when you're making space, you want them to back around a corner so that you guys can take that space and that you're still there. Right? If you do a flank, space-making, quote-unquote, ultimate, uh, and you don't kill anybody, which is usually why you're using the space-making ultimate, right? You're not necessarily trying to get a kill. Uh, when your ult ends, you're going to die. Okay, And you don't you don't want that, because if you're trying to make space, you're trying to make space for your team so you guys can take and hold that space. So. Anyway, uh, yeah, not, not a fan of that ult, right? No, don't worry about it. Not every, not every ult is perfect. I like this. This is good. This guy, right? They're not even looking at you. Right? They're not looking at you, so it's free damage. Mm. Okay. So, they're not looking at you, so it's free damage. If they do look at you, that means they're not looking at your team. I, I pause there because... Why did you fade here? I don't, I don't see a reason to fade here. Because the Bastion's looking the exact opposite way. <laughs> right? <laughs> He's not looking at you. Not even looking near you. 
And it's on a controller. He's not going to whip around real quick. Stay there. That was an unnecessary fade, okay? So. Like, I get it. You know, I'll just... Bash can do a lot of damage really quickly. It's not that fast. It's still not instant, right? Wait till he actually looks at you. This is a really messy fight. Um, yeah, I would have liked to see more... Uh, a little bit more time uh, being an aggressor there. So I like the concept. Do more of that. Because in in some games, I'll be like, okay, here's the obvious person that you're going to harass. The only person that they have on their team that I would do that to is their Junkrat. Uh, but that's dangerous. Especially on King's Row, right? Because King's Row is good for Junkrat for the same reasons it's good for Moira. And he does a shitload more damage than you do. So... But when he's off alone like this, um, I want to put pressure on him because I can shoot orbs up near him, right? You're, you're the only person on your team that can do that reliably, right? Yeah, sure, Hanzo can kind of shoot around corners with his, with his Storm Arrow, but it's not, you know, uh, I'd never rely on that. Okay. So, yep, keep the pressure up there. That is your job did but do it more if you shoot it look at that look at his health again shoot a damage orb up there at that angle and it'll go bloop, 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 and it'll kill him um i typically will not if that worked i would typically will not uh ult a bastion right in his face it's a good fade um so a little dangerous but paid off look how much value this Friggin' Junkrat is getting. Holy crap. It took him friggin' forever to die, right? When you could have killed him with a single orb, you know, when he was running away in that hallway. Okay. So when you're playing these games, you know, try to ide identify that person or that player that you're like, okay, uh, I'm gonna have the most effect against this player, right? Press tab. Look at who they're playing and be like, hmm, okay, right? Junkrat's got high mobility, but no self-sustain, right? The Moira is going to be all over the base, probably with the tank. Um, and the Kiriko seems to, does, she doesn't seem to want to be up there with him, right? She's, she's typically uh, kind of off doing her own thing. Okay. So use that against the Junkrat. Look at it. He's up there alone again. Okay. And you can shoot. You can shoot orbs in here. And look at that. He would have been dead again. This dude would be friggin'... The way he positions, this dude would permanently be in spawn if I was in this game. Let's see if he kills the Reaper. Nope, the Reaper gets it. So that's good, right? Luckily, the Reaper got it. All right, but you guys die and lose the fight anyway. Uh, this is dangerous. Um, don't, don't get in the habit of doing that because you just staggered yourself. What you need to do, jump down on the point, Maybe you get an extra 0.1 meter. Uh, do a little bit of damage. Shoot an orb if you can and die. Okay. The only time I will try to get out is if, like, I know I'm going to get out. Running in a straight line away from a team that's chasing you is not how you're going to get out. I would be I would be bowling the shit out of this junk rat. Look where he is again. He's by himself. Okay. Coalescing lost fights seems to be uh, seems to be a common theme here. All right, because let's go back to when you actually cast this, okay? All right. Everybody's purple. Can you do anything about that? No. Can anybody on your team, literally anybody on your team, do anything about that? No. Um, I don't remember. I think it's five seconds. Don't quote me on that. I can't remember how long the uh, anti-heal lasts from Junker Queen's ult, it, but it's a long-ass time. All right. In an eight-second coalescence, if that lasts five seconds, right, your, your coalescence is effectively only doing something for three seconds. I I, I can't I don't know what uh, how long it is, but it's it's long, right? And everybody is at half health or below. There was absolutely no reason to coalesce here. Okay. And then you you know, and then you end up getting no value out of it, right? Because damage dealt with Coalescence does not give you ult charge, but it gives the enemy supports ult charge. So if you're going to 
use coalescence against the enemy team ensure it's for a reason, right? It's either to make space, right? To, to get your team, like, to capture the objective, right? It's okay if you give the supports a little bit of ult charge, right? And don't get any kills because you guys capture the objective, right? That's the whole point of the friggin' game anyway. There you go, right? Shoot an orb up there. Do that more often. You see how it bounces around up there? There's a lot of that. And typically where Junkrat likes to be is also places where orbs do really well. I would have been screaming Moira no Fade. <laughs> That's like my favorite thing to call out. Because if I can get a Moira to Fade, like, I'm going to kill you for that. Okay. Are we at 30 minutes? Okay. You guys said you're about to cap. But I, I feel like I, I see the, the big picture here, right? Good. I, I like that really aggressive fade there. That's awesome, right? Because he has to make sure you guys don't cap, right? That's part of his job. He's going to be concerned with that. He's not going to stay there and duel you. And you can use that against him, right? That's good stuff. We're going to fade. Nice. Okay, and you guys cap. Good. Okay. So, yeah, there was a ton of opportunity for you to swing fights, right? And in a really close game like this, right? Think of how much more value you could have added uh, by not coalescing lost fights. Okay, just kind of paying attention to what's going on around you and then seeking out the weak enemies that Moira excels at killing. And their Junkrat was one of them. His positioning sucked. I wouldn't duel him, right? Because he can just combo you, okay, before you can even fade. But you don't have to do that, especially on King's Row. Shoot an orb up there. Make him run away, right? My, my biggest... One of the things I struggle the most with when playing Junkrat is that exact thing, right? I don't have any healing. My mobility is on a, you know, a decently long cooldown, right? And, and it's not very accurate, right? Or at least I'm not very accurate with it. Like jumping around, right? Uh, you know, use that against, use that against him, okay? So coalescence usage, okay? One, don't hold on to it forever. Don't hold on to it for two minutes, okay? But don't just throw it away either, right? It's it's Sure, it's easy for me to say that, uh, but that's the case, right? Think about it when you're using it. If you're using it when half your team's purple, um, you know, you're not going to get any value out of it, so just understand that. If you use that when your tank's dead and they're in a, in a support ult, you're not going to get any value out of that. Uh, so just keep that stuff in mind. So, uh, good stuff. I, I, I like that you, uh, you know, eventually get a little bit aggressive. Do that more. Do that more. Okay, and, uh, you know, find your limits on, on what you can do with that. So, Okay, well, I think that'll about do it for this one. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and I hope it helps, and good luck.